day, ladies and gentlemen. It's Mr. Sergeant here with your day 113 recap video for ELA and for science. Now, you may notice something's a little bit different. Ladies and gentlemen, I am home today. I don't have my green screen. I don't have my backgrounds. I'm struggling, ladies and gentlemen. But we're not going to struggle through this video because it's going to be a very easy video. Now, today, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to uh, talk a little bit about ELA. It's super easy today because, well, we just did quizzes and tests today. But in science, we're going to talk about something that I hold dear to my heart, and that is survival. And we've got a fun little lab and maybe even a bonus experiment that you can try at home uh, that deals with tension, that deals with compasses, that deals with directions, it deals with getting lost. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to tell you right now, we deal with a lot of information in the science part of our video. So let's go ahead and begin. Now, like I said before, ladies and gentlemen, in ELA today, we took two, not just one, but two tests. And they're both in the description below. The first test we took was a reading comprehension test on black history. First of all, those that did it in class, you did a phenomenal job. But if you didn't get a chance to complete it, go ahead and click on the link in the description to go and take that test. Um, I've also sent it to Google Classroom as well as Class Dojo. And the other one is our end of the week spelling test. So ladies and gentlemen, both those links are in the description below and I've already sent them to you in Google Classroom and on Class Dojo. Good luck, ladies and gentlemen. I know you are gonna do a fantastic, fantastic job. So our focus in science today is about survival. Now I look up at the map above me and I think about all the places that I've gone, all the times I've gone out into the wilderness and the mountains and a couple of things that have really helped me along the way and helped me on my journey and are essential for every time you go out. Now, a couple things that I, I know whenever I go out into the woods, a couple things that I want. I want to have a way to have light. I want to have a way to have my way back home. Uh, I, I want to know what time it is. And we have all of those things on our cell phones, don't we? But sometimes our cell phones fail. Sometimes the batteries die out. And then what? What are we going to do? How are we going to know what time it is? How are we going to know which direction we're moving in? Well, ladies and gentlemen, today's activity is going to be dealing with compasses. Now, all you need today is some water, maybe a piece of paper, uh, a container for the water. We don't just want to have water flying out and a needle because a needle is very important. Now, I don't know if you knew this. I'm going to go into my desk of science here a needle is is can do so many things you think about all the purposes and ways that we use needles whether it's to fix clothes whether it's doctors use them to help people that have gotten hurt with cuts um and a needle is definitely needed in survival now i know i always have a needle in my in my wallet mainly for a number of reasons one uh i often split my pants Ladies and gentlemen, whether it's on the side or I get holes in the knees or somewhere. Listen, my pants, they, they're in rough shape, ladies and gentlemen. So we can use a needle to sew them up and fix them. But in a survival situation, uh, what I would use this needle for is to sort of show me the way home. And you're asking yourself, how can this needle show me the way home? Well, I'm about to show you. Now, if we know anything about compasses here, we know that there are four major directions. We have north, south, east, and west. Now, a lot of people just point north or point up to say north, but really it's more of a two-dimensional way of thinking, meaning we don't look up. North would be a certain direction to the sides or behind us. But when you're in the woods or you're in the desert or you're in any of the biomes that we've talked about this week, knowing where north is is super important because if you have any chance of getting out, you want to travel in the, the opposite direction that you came in. So if you're traveling in the desert and you know that you came in from the west and traveled east, well, how do you find your way home? Very good. You go back west. 
And if you're in the rainforest and you know that you traveled south when you were there, how are you going to get home? Well, in the opposite direction. To come back where you came from, you're going to go the opposite of south, which is north. So to find our way, we need a compass. Now, not everybody carries a compass, but if you have a needle, you can do it. So I'm going to show you today how to create a compass using this needle. Now, the first thing you're going to do is you're going to use the big end. Now, there are two ends of the needle. you got the sharp end and you got the big end. We're going to take the big end right here. Okay, and what we're going to do is we're going to find some metal. Now, in the wilderness, we could use a rock. We could use anything to create friction because what we want to do is we want to magnetize this needle. No, not magneto. This needle. We want to add magnetic things to this because, well, we want it to point north. Something you may not know is the North Pole is one big magnet. All right. Uh, the North Pole or North is what we call magnetized, meaning every compass on the planet will point north because there are tiny magnets inside of a compass, too. So we can know which way is north just by the way it's pointing. So we're going to make this point north. So the first thing I'm going to do is I just happen to have a, a metal screw here and you really want a stone or any metal other object that you have and you want to just scrape it now what you're doing here is when you're adding friction to this you are creating sort of a magnet you are magnetizing the needle anytime the ions in the metals are touching and there's friction it creates like a magnetic pulse almost there's a magnetic connection. So now we have created a magnet here. The next thing you're going to do is, well, I'm going to have to change my camera angle for this one, but I'm going to show you in a second. You're going to put this on a piece of paper. So the first thing that I'm going to do, ladies and gentlemen, is I have my water nice and clean. And I'm going to tell you right now, cold water works better for this. All right. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to place my piece of paper and have it float. Now, if you notice, it's floating because of the surface tension. And we kind of want it to be still. And then I'm going to place... So after doing this experiment a couple of times, one thing you learn is that sometimes things don't work out. So instead of using paper, what I've done is I have used a plastic uh, top to a sports bottle or a water bottle. And what we're going to use, why we're going to use this for is because we need something that's going to sit on top of the surface of the water. Because right now there is surface tension on this water that's holding the plastic container or plastic container top up. And we need something that's going to float. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to take our magnetized needle and we're going to place it on top of the bottle top. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and place this on and have it float. Now, I want you to watch what it does. First of all, it went to the side, didn't it? Okay, so we're going to move it out to the middle, but we're not going to change the direction because what's happening is the magnet is pulling it. So if we spin it around, it's going to continue to move and then eventually it is going to stop. You guessed it. There's north that way. Well, there's, there. North is that way, isn't it? All right. So we can use this to find north. Now, since we know north, we can find south, can't we? South is the opposite way. And by looking at the sun, we can definitely tell where east and west are. So this right here, ladies and gentlemen, is a great tool to use if you're ever out in the wilderness or out in the woods or something that you just want to try at home. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I have a second experiment that I would love for you to try, and it's called a sundial. It is important to understand what time it is when you're out in the wilderness, because you do not want to get stranded without having prepared for night. So in the description below, you're going to find 
the step-by-step -step process of how to make your own sundial. Now, I said this earlier in class, but I'll say it again. If you and your family put together this sundial this weekend and take a picture of it and send it to me via Class Dojo or my email, then I'm going to give you guys 10 bonus points on yesterday's biome test. Good luck, ladies and gentlemen. The instructions are right there, and I've also I've Google Classroom you as well as Class Dojo. Now, one more experiment that we're gonna do today, because in Science Club, first of all, I want to give a shout out to Lonnie, uh, Adelie, to Selma, Ilias, to um, my assistant Eli. Thank you, Eli, for all your help today. Uh, Peyton was there. Uh, Jean Abigail, uh, we we had so many. I'm, I feel like I'm forgetting somebody, but oh, Donna, how can I forget about Donna? Listen, ladies and gentlemen, the highlight of my week is getting to see all of you and see how excited you are while doing science experiments. So I have one more science experiment that we did in science club today that well kind of fits our, our pattern here. Now we talked about surface tension, didn't we? how the top of the water has some surface tension. Well, water also has air pressure. Water is incredible. Now, here's the challenge I have for you. I'm about to do something, and I want you to explain to me how I did it. I'm not gonna tell you the steps, because the steps are easy, I'm gonna get to show you. I'm not gonna tell you what's gonna happen, because ladies and gentlemen, I want you to explain to me how this works. So, like I said, ladies and gentlemen, I want you to explain to me what is happening in this next science experiment. So, to do this, all you're going to need is a water bottle and another container. Ready? Here we go. Why isn't this container filling up with water? Can anyone tell me? If you can, ladies and gentlemen, if you can tell me why this is not filling up with water right now, please send me a message and explain to me what is going on right here so that this water is not filling. Even if I lift it up, it's not, oh, there's some water there. It's not filling up. Why is this happening? If you can explain why, definitely send me a message and explain What's happening here? I look forward to your answers. And ladies and gentlemen, that's it for day number 113. Do not forget the links to the tests and quizzes and the experiments that we did today are in the chat box below. I hope you all have a great and restful weekend. And until Monday, I'll see you later.